I've done some initial backing off of this blade on the, the quarter grits on the other side. I'm now going to come onto my 15 micron and my 9 and work my way down through here. A little bit of the honing fluid on that surface again. Just move them around a little bit. And see if we can polish up this back. This 15 micron is pretty fine, so it won't cut this incredibly quickly. It's quite a wide blade. This is the four and a half, so it's two and three eighths of an inch wide. Yeah, it's got that nine micron. flatter again. Already you can see the steel that's been removed being left on the PSA abrasive paper. And I'll come down to a 3 micron. This really is pretty fine. almost just gliding across that surface, but it is removing steel. Just changing my pattern a little bit, my hand here. In the back of that blade, it's probably quite well prepared. What I do now set them up and do some honing of the main angle. That's come at ground at 25 degrees, pretty good grinding. I generally tend to actually re-grind all my blades when they're new on the tall mech before I come on to a scary sharp. I would have a go with that one. The honing device I tend to use most of the time, if you can get into it freehand that's brilliant, but it is pretty tricky to get used to doing it. Uh, we use a couple of honing guys, that's what I tend to use most of the time now. I've got him set up at 30 degrees on this yellow scale. I turn him upside down. Actually, that's quite wide open from the mortise chisel. It wasn't as large it was doing before. Wind that clamp bar down. Put him in here carefully up against this registration on the left or the right hand side. Tighten that bar down. Just slipped a little bit in my hand there. Get in there nice and square if we can. Get that one tightened down. Move this off the front here. I've got this set basically so there's a, a turn button on the side of that set at the moment at 12 o'clock. I'll have a go with this 15 micron. I may need to go to a coarser one because this is my first initial grinding, but we'll see how we go with honing. I may need to turn over for a coarser one. This also has got a cambered roller on it. I tend to use a cambered roller for my plain irons. This has been come ground flat. Otherwise, if I was to put this on my Tormek, and we should be able to do forwards and backwards motions on this. If you're using the traditional lapping films, they're a little bit finer. And if you go forwards and backwards, you may cut into it with your forward stroke. I'm just doing a bit of a rocking motion left to right. Put some of this back down here with my thumb. And you may see I'm putting a bit of left hand motion, a bit on the centre, a bit on the right hand side. You might see the way the oil is moving across here. Just see if I can feel a, a wire edge, which I can across all of them. If I turn this button actually to pull it out, turn it around to three o'clock, it's lifted that by about a degree. And I'll do a final finish on this nine micron. Backwards and forwards again. Just a couple of strokes. And I'll turn it to 6 o'clock, it's lifted it again just fractionally and I'm going to work on this 3 micron. For this one it's quite fine, I'm just going to do a backward stroke. I'm really just now polishing the very tip. For the left hand side, I wouldn't tend to go backwards and forwards on this. You can do it, sometimes you get away with it, but this time I probably won't because it's a fresh blade. There's quite a bit of heavy swore from the back of this. And I think we might find we end up actually cutting into the very fine abrasive. I 
I'll take them out of here. I've now got quite a heavy burr on the back of here. So I now have to remove that and I'll probably just go on these three finer brazers again. In fact, I'll probably just go for nine micron, a couple of swipes on there, and then onto the three. You just to back that one off and get rid of that slight burr that was on there. I'll get rid of any excess oil. Maybe on there. Getting a bit messy I am here now. I'm going to have a tidy up in a minute. We may find that will cut hairs straight from there. Have a go. That's the back of my hand there. Yep, you can see that that's cutting off those razor hair, razor sharp, pretty quickly. And that was fresh out of the box. It's taken me about 10 or 15 minutes. I uh, had to go on the coarser bonds, but that's a very nice finish. I'll get this reset up into the plane, get that one out of the way. Bits out the way as well. So there's my plane again. I'll put it on top of here now so it's not too messy. What we're going to do, we're going to put these two pins back inside here. They've got a nice little pip mark on the back of them which shows you where the actual hole is on the inside face. I need to get those two pip marks pointing back towards me. They should pop down into, but I'll turn them around for you to have a look. They should pop down into the slots there. And there's a little U-shaped piece of steel that goes over the adjuster. Get this in there. Turn around, get my screwdriver. And I can just start to re-tighten these ones back down again. I took him out completely, which I say is fairly unusual to do, just to get him all cleaned up. That's back in there. What I'll do now, I'll reassemble the blade with the chip breaker on there. That's probably come with a very good finish on the back of there. I'm going to put him onto my main blade, put him on at 90 degrees, draw him up the blade, spin him round. I'll undo him just fractionally underneath my finger, and push him back down. Get him as close as you can to that edge of the blade, I'd say about a quarter to half a mil. Get him so he's nice and parallel up the edge here. Flip it, just flip him over, pinch him with your fingers and tighten that one down. I'd probably do the larger cabinet screwdriver but that is going to be okay. I'm going to pop this now back inside the frog. So uh, Y lever just pops up through the top there. I'll put my lever cap on there. First time we've ever set this one up. Just make sure that it's nice and central. Pop that one down. That feels about the right kind of pressure. If the pressure's not quite right, undo him. Reset this screw with your screwdriver. Once that's set up, you really shouldn't ever need to do that again. You shouldn't be using that on a daily basis. Bring that back, closed again. Let's turn him over. The mouth at the moment is a little bit open for trying to do some fine work. So what I would do, if I'll turn him around so you can see again, undo these two outside screws, just probably a bit of a turn. What I can do now is do the centre screw up and that will bring my blade forward to close that mouth down. That looks pretty good. Tighten these two up again. see him a bit more myself. Got those nipped down. Now I can look down from the sole of my plane, down from my toe, down to the heel. I can see there's actually quite a heavy black line, which means the blade's advanced quite a bit. What I do is now adjust him backwards. So he's back inside the body. Turn him so I'm now taking the slack out of that thread and beginning to push that blade back through. What you can do if you can't quite see it, is take yourself a little bit of timber and use that just to see if you can feel where the blade is. Slightly heavier on this side, you may see a bit more of a shaving on this side here. So I can just use my lateral adjustment lever, get him back leveled up. He looks pretty good. Just a bit more tweak on that one. 
Move that one out of the way for the moment. Let's see if we can play a little bit of timber. Got myself here a little bit of London plain or lace wood. I'll just put them in my vise and I'll come out and move that camera a little bit for you. Let's see how we can plane that piece down. Also I might put on the sole of that, I haven't really cleaned this up very much. A bit of camera wax just to help it flow and we'll see what that blade's going to be cutting like. Pretty heavy cut at the moment. So I'm going to do and wind that blade back in. Start to just wind it back out again. Just tweaking it as I go with my finger, just moving it down. A little bit more. Nice, heavy, solid plane. Really feels nice and flat on the timber there. A little bit more, a bit more wax on there. That plane, like any new plane, is going to take a little bit of time to get worn in. And we're getting a fairly fine, consistent shading all the way through now. All the way through that, and you can probably see, you can see through the fibres. So we're probably, I don't know, a twentieth of a mil, something like that. Pretty fine indeed. So that's the new Wood River four and a half smoothing plane, and a nice bit of kit too. Available from us here at Woodworkers Workshop in the UK.